Ooh, or all sorts of things. He even was able to make blankets out of the peel of the peanuts. I hope, and that's why it was important for me, we all find idols in our life. People who were important and had a great influence on our personality. But does that <coughs> do me any good as a politician in the EU parliament? What is wrong with our politics? Why are the people always uneasy regarding uh, the EU? Especially when geostrategical decisions have to be made. What is the cause of all the migration movements all around the world? I myself am working in the ACP delegation, responsible for 79 states in Africa, the Caribbean, and the Pacific region. With my colleague, Mr. Bundu from Sierra Leone, I built up a concept to get the 50 poorest countries around the world out of poverty. We could finance the building of schools for all children, have energy even in rural areas, drinking water, medical treatment, and other fundamental human needs. We only needed a small support of a few very rich countries. These were sho shoving trillions, uh, tr trillions of dollars and euros, constantly making maximum benefit, even when other states went bankrupt. To achieve a debt release, support education, drinking water, electricity, and other fundamentals, we only needed a transaction tax of 0.1%. I demonstrated this concept to the former foreign minister of the UK, Philip Hammond. And the only answer I got was, do you want to cripple my market? We're talking about 0.51%. We have to, <coughs> too many politicians building up walls. And this is something which is growing pretty fast also in our parliament. Some examples, Boris Johnson and Nigel Farage from the UK, Marine Le Pen from France, Heinz Christian Strache from Austria, Gerd Wilders from the Netherlands, Frauke Petri from Germany. And they're growing in numbers, but also growing in uh, people who have responsibility. All of these politicians use lies as a political working method. At the same time, if they are made responsible, they duck away like cowards. Clinton and Obama have acted in a very similar way, especially in the last weeks and days of their responsibility in politics. Does President Trump now follow these um, political tactics? I, Anna Gericke, from a member, as a, a, a member of the European Parliament, and got there by the family party. I had noticed that in a family with seven children, there are many responsibilities. Each child and my wife and I, as parents, are part of the family with individual characters and have an own personality. But Together, we can be a strong unit, be a strong unity. The Jews were split by being spread all over the world, but they are unified by language and religion. And that has made them strong over centuries. For quite a long time, Europe was split in many countries and country paths. Many languages and walls separated the people. Also, our church, our religious <coughs> religions were split. 500 years ago, a monk stood up because he understood the Latin Bible. The people were driven by fear in those times because they only knew what priests and other elders told them. So Martin Luther translated the Bible into German and the people understood <coughs> and were made free. It took 
quite a few centuries yet, but this was the beginning. I thought it was. Being in the European Parliament, I learned this year that it was not the first time. 1,300 years ago, it had already happened. The men saw <coughs> that men saw the negative power of separation in Bulgaria and Georgia by language. So they agreed upon one language, gave it a script, translated the Bible, and grew in power by unity. One God, separated as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but remaining one God. Over a thousand years ago, Muhammad tried to copy the religion of the Jews and the Christians. The first 12 years, he made progress, wanting to convince the Jews in Medina about his revelation. But the Jews wanted to keep their truth, God's truth. Muhammad got mad and changed his religion into a religion of hate. Hate, fright and war offered to the believers as a solution. Other religions followed, but they often enough found a more peaceful way. Take the Mormons. The Mormon Tabernacle Choir and <coughs> had sung for Trump's inauguration. The Mormons were created some 450 years ago. John Smith wanted to find the place where Jesus would come back to earth. So he and his followers got onto a track of wagons and headed westward through America. Coming over a hill, John Smith had high temperature. He looked down into the valley and said, this is the place. It was a salt lake. John Smith had a vision and millions followed him in the following centuries. Today, the valley is filled with the Salt Lake City. There is a temple, the famous Tabernacle Choir, and many have been invited. What is our message? What is my message? Do we have a vision to follow? Or are we just Brexit, Brexit coming up, any, and, or any other kind of exit? Walls being rebuilt, which have been torn down. What is our unity? Do we follow a leader who runs for being first, being the greatest, working for a thousand year lasting Reich that broke down within a few years? How far can we trust Trump? And yes, family standing for a unit. Trump has been married three times. What is his future? What is his vision for our future? Is it similar to the one of the Mormons? Or is it more similar to the one um, putting up war as a solution, putting up hate as a solution? I think we don't need another race regarding nuclear weapons, building walls of separation. As Christians, we believe in one God. And I think this is something which unites us and which invites others. Christian Christianity stands for open doors. I think this is a very nice title. Let us build bridges, let us build homes, let us build schools, let us secure the future for the coming generation. No walls standing for separation, but one God for one unity also in Christianity. And let us bring this unity in Christianity out into the world. I have been asked often enough by people from these 79 states of um, the ACP countries, what are you doing in Europe? You have taught us so many good things. What is left of that? What do you ask us to do? 
um, which has nothing to do with our normal way of living, with the values we've learned. I think we have a lot of answers to give, we have a lot of answers to look for, and I'm very happy um, to uh, <coughs> also be able to listen to solutions afterwards by Dr. Malak. Thanks, Anna Gericke, for your statement. It's uh, great to have you with us to hear from the EU Parliament and have the um, opportunity to ask some questions. So we will um, have an open debate, discuss that, searching for solutions, that's our goal. And uh, let me start with the question about the sovereignty of countries. I guess that is a problem many see um, dealing with the EU and maybe that's the reason for the um, for the uh, bad reputation it has and uh, the fear there is for a loss of sovereignty. What can you say about the relationship between EU and the nations, the countries, as we had uh, yesterday this uh, discussion about Brexit or exits? Um, how can you deal with that as a kind of supernatural organization as an EU? Having grown up in Papua New Guinea, I know what a struggle it is if you are a small country and you have to find your way in the global uh, law, in global um, <laughs> restrictions and uh, the global way of uh, being a mar on the market with very strong, too strong partners. Now, we as, a European, we as Europeans are also in this big global market, in this global world. And I think even Germany, which I think is a very strong partner within the EU, cannot survive by its own. We need partners, and we need these partners within the EU. Now, what happens if we misuse these, this strength? We misuse it, and it's not only the politicians who misuse it. It is the multinational companies, it's the banks, it's whatever. What we saw in Greece is homemade. So I think um, the benefit of a big EU of 28 states, of 500 million people, this benefit, of course, is uh, in danger if we don't follow standards. But if these standards are not followed, banks offer money for nothing to Greece, and they don't know how to use this money in the right way, so they go bankrupt. It's a funny thing to make Greece responsible and not the banks. It's a funny thing that we, with as as um, taxpayers save these banks. Talking about responsibility, we should not only make the weakest ones responsible, we should always um, <coughs> take the responsibility, uh, we should al also make those responsible who have started in uh, initiating a way which could, could not be win won. Thanks, Anne. Uh, Recently, the New York Post had uh, published an article mentioning um, a quote by uh, John Claude Juncker, who is the president of the EU Parliament, which deals with this uh, issue of uh, sovereignty. And uh, uh, he said, um, of course, there will be a transfer of sovereignty, but would I be intelligent to draw the attention of public opinion to this fact? And when the euro was introduced, he said, if no one kicks up a fuss because most people don't understand what has been decided, we continue step by step until there is no turning back. Maybe that is a summary of the fear of many people and maybe a reason of um, the mentioned populist in your speech. So how to deal with that? Is there something going on we don't know? Well, I think... Re responsibility is not only within the countries. Responsibility is not only with us politicians. But the responsibility also asks us Christians, where are we? 
do we name the values we want to have in the European Union? Do we really say where we want to go and where we think it is important? Juncker built up or offered a social pillar, an empty social pillar. And now he opened up the door and said, come on, put in what you think is important. Just, just put things in and then let's see, we'll grow on it. Now, I didn't see any churches active, any Christians active in seeing which values do we want to put in this social pillar. It were uh, people who were, I think, in their values pretty singular, speaking for minorities, not for the great, um, <coughs> the majority of Christians. And this is something where we are all responsible. I often get visitors coming in who care about schools, who care about um, all sorts of things in our daily life, about how we take responsible for, uh, responsibility for development, uh, developing countries, how we take responsible for weak countries in our own uh, European surroundings.